Welcome and thank you for joining us at the table. I am on location this week with Scott Hell. He is the executive director of the Catholic Social Services of Montana. And it is just a pleasure to have you with us, Scott. Well, thank you, Thomas. It's uh, very, very happy and very excited to be here to get to discuss our mission and our ministries a little bit with you. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, Let's start off real simple. A lot of people don't really know what Catholic Social Services of Montana is and, and what that organization does. And so give us a broad overview of what, what, that, what you do. Yeah, of course, of course. So yeah, Catholic Social Services of Montana. Uh, this is actually year 70 that we've existed. Yeah, so kind of, you know, we really haven't, haven't done a formal celebration or anything, but our 70th year since we've been chartered. Um, and in that whole time, you know, what we've done is we have been an adoption agency as our primary ministry. Mm -hmm. So it's been our Catholic churches and our Catholic diocese. So we, you know, we serve both dioceses, both the Diocese of Great Falls Billings and the Diocese of Helena. Um, that has been our primary ministry has been adoption services for 70 years, so, you know, providing um, providing guidance for mothers who are or mothers or couples who are experiencing, you know, crisis pregnancies or unexpected mm -hmm. pregnancies, um, and then making sure we're matching them with families who are ready and you know cleared and, and just overjoyed to adopt a adopt a child and and kind of you know raise them raise them um, as their own, which is a really fantastic thing. Um, you know, in addition, we have other ministries that we that we do currently. We have a diaper bank down here in Helena. And we also are hoping to expand that ministry. And we have other ministries as well that are on the docket. But right now it's the diaper bank down here in Helena um, and then adoption services, which, of, which is the big thing that we're, we're most known for and the thing that we're still doing in, in, uh, every day, making sure we're getting uh, children into good homes. You alluded a little bit to the fact that you're here in Helena mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the state of Montana is large. And so you are not the Catholic Social Services of Great Falls or Helena or Billings. You're <laughs> of Montana. How do you cover such a vast region, especially whenever it comes to specific things like adoptions? Oh, that's a, you know, that's a very good question. And, the, and, you know, the direct answer is we have social workers who travel the state to meet with mothers and they travel the state to meet with adoptive couples and get them um, get them certified as parents who are ready to adopt. Um, we actually have a social worker in both dioceses. So while our main offices are here in Helena, we have a social worker here in Helena, but we also have a social worker in a secondary office in Billings. Okay. And that, so our social worker down there helps cover, you know, the South Central and then Eastern part of the state. Um, and then our social worker here in Helena, of course, covers <laughs> covers the Western <laughs> half. And, you know, they put on, they put on a lot of miles um, serving these folks who are in need and these folks who are looking to adopt. Um, but it's something that they joyfully do and they, they love it. There has been a major uh, case that, that occurred in the last 10 months mm -hmm. of the overturning of, of Roe. Uh, have you seen a change in the number of people or the kind of people coming, seeking services from from Catholic Social Services? You know, in, in the short time since then, it hasn't been a drastic change in particular, just most, I mean, mostly because, and this is an unfortunate part, but here in Montana, we have a, we have another case that was decided on, I believe it was the Armstrong case, that was decided on, it was built on the back mm -hmm. of the Roe v. Wade decision. Um, as far as health, health privacy goes. Um, and what that does is it makes the state of Montana sanctuary state for abortions, which is, which is a very difficult thing, of course. Um, as you look at all the states around us who all have trigger laws that went into effect. Um, but what I have seen since that, since that case, you know, since Roe was overturned was I've seen a, I've seen a reinvigoration, I guess is, is probably the best way to put a reinvigoration of, you know, this is something that can actually be achieved. Yeah. You know, we've been working at this and we've been praying <laughs> for this for well, how long now? Um, decades. Yeah. And it's actually something that can be achieved. This can be overturned. You know, the state of Montana could, on the back of that overturn, could also strike down that mm -hmm. strike down that court decision that we had here in Montana. Um, so I've seen a reinvigoration is, is kind of the big thing. And when it when it comes in for Montana and, you know, we're praying every day and we're 
um, optimistic that it will when it comes, you know, we'll be we'll be ready to receive um, all those all those women who will be needing our services and um, hoping to get get their children into good homes. As a new executive director for mm -hmm. any organization, of course, you have your vision as to where you want to see the organization go in your tenure as as the executive director. What is your vision for? I know the bishops both want you to expand beyond mm -hmm. just adoption. And so what does that vision look like for Catholic Social Services in Montana? Right, right. Well, the first thing right off the bat is, yes, we want to expand, but we also want to keep our adoption services Absolutely. program very strong. Um, because as we had just discussed, you know, 30 <laughs> seconds ago, we want to be ready for when, yeah. when that time comes. Um, we want to be able to, ex you know, accept and place all the children that are, that would come into our care and come into our, um, come into our feel the work, you know? Sure. Um, so that's that's the first goal of being executive director is to make sure that that is sustainable. Um, because, you know, contrary to a lot of popular belief, I know we, we might not have touched on this depending on how the conversation was going, but adoption is an incredibly affordable mm -hmm. um, option through Catholic Social Services. We're well below, you know, I mean, I think the national average for an adoption is forty or fifty thousand dollars, and we're less than half of that. Even wow, yeah, which is a really so we we like to make that a, a very very achievable thing. Um, and in addition, there's other tax credits coming, which is a really neat thing. So um, we wanted that's but that's the first goal is to make sure that that's sustainable since we are a small nonprofit. Um, is making sure that we can keep that offering that service um, sure. indefinitely because that's one of our calls is is a Catholic church answering answering, you know, the pro-life debate, the most, you know, the most classical pro-life debate when you're talking specifically about abortion. And so we want to make sure that's sustainable. But the second big thing we want to do is that diaper bank we have down here in Helena. We want to expand those services as possible, mm -hmm. um, as, as much as possible. And we've gotten, you know, calls from both dioceses, which is really neat, from volunteer groups. And we hope to receive even more um, because we think we can provide some support for opening diaper banks in local communities that are underserved with that kind of service. Um, but that's but that's our next big goal there is to ex expand those because... You know, you look at the big the big argument we always get is, you know, Catholics or Christians just care about getting mm -hmm. the child born. That's <laughs> right. it. After that, we're out. Right. All right. We put down our signs and we leave. And that obviously isn't the case. That's, right. you know, right here at CSSM, <laughs> we are getting children adopted. That is, you know, so we're working that whole process. But in addition, what our diaper bank goal is, is it's a it's a no questions asked um, policy. So if you need help to get you through a tough time, you can come in. You can receive diapers, clothing, formula, you know, any any room of or any uh, anything in the realm of toiletries. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have strollers and car seats and cribs, all sorts of all sorts of stuff that the family needs to help raise their child. And we want that to be our Catholic Church's answer sure. to underserved communities. You know, this is how we support families in need. And our third goal. Um, which I'm currently working on, and I'm working alongside the bishops from both dioceses, so all three of them currently. <laughs> um, and what we're working on is providing mental health counseling services. Oh wow, yeah. much needed. Yeah, it's it's incredibly needed. I spent the first, you know, a good portion of my first six months here in this position, traveling both sides of the diocese, um, and chatting with priests. I talked to a lot of priests. I talked to a lot of lay folk in both dioceses, and I asked them. You know, what is something that is incredibly needed? You know, what are our top priorities? And the one that really stood out was counseling um, for yeah. folks that, that need that kind of mental health support. Um, so that's the big thing on the list, and that's what we're working on. I hope to have it launched somewhat <laughs> soon. Um, of course, we all we all know how it is out there and finding employees and uh -huh. small nonprofits working. So it's a, kind of a flexible timeline right now, but it's very strongly in the works, and we're putting together plans, and um, we're, like I said, working alongside the bishops and our board of directors to to make sure when we launch this, it's just like our adoption services, it's sustainable moving forward so we can offer these services indefinitely. Just those three, I know, aren't the only things you're focusing on. Um, like anything within the church, you we all are doing so much, uh, but... Just those three would take a lot of uh, funding and um, your position and the whole organization of um, Catholic Social Services of Montana is funded by both dioceses, as we've mentioned. Um, is that difficult to find a balance between uh, having two bosses or <laughs> in the current situation of three bosses? Um, or is it really just 
a three-way conversation that kind of stays right within the teachings of the church and and there's really not a challenge with having right. two bosses. <laughs> That's a great question. So, you know what's what's really fantastic is our bishops from both dioceses agree. You know, they agree that this is where we need to focus. We need to focus on pro-life from conception mm-hmm. to natural death. And the best way to address that when we're a very small nonprofit is continue offering our adoption services because that is what we have done forever and that's what we're very good at. Sure. And then mental health being the next step in that process. And they're in complete agreement on that is our board of directors. So it hasn't been, I don't, I don't find any issues at all. Our good. bishops are fantastic. Um, they're great to work with and they're ready to have, you know, they're ready to support Catholic social services mm-hmm. as we look to serve more, more folks across Montana. Um, you know, as a, you had mentioned there, you know, funded by both dioceses as a separate nonprofit, you know, we have our own mm-hmm. board of directors. We, um, have our own business operating expenses and bank accounts and everything. You know, we're totally for all intents and purposes, separate from, from separate from the two dioceses as our own 501 C3 nonprofit. Um, but at the same time, we are, um, supported by both dioceses. Mm-hmm. So, you know, how we're funded is from the, through the annual Catholic appeals for both dioceses, we get a portion of our budget um, filled and they match 50, 50, which Excellent. is why we try to provide services to the whole state, of course. Sure. Um, so we're, they split 50, 50 and there are two biggest, our two biggest supporters of the two dioceses. And then we fill the gaps in, of course, with, you know, service fees from our adoption program mm-hmm. or counseling moving forward. We'll probably try to work some service fees into that with a sliding scale, of course. Um, and then just from just from general general donations, um, which is a really, really wonderful thing that there's so many people in Helena and all the way across Montana, um, including in the Eastern Diocese, you know, in Great Falls Billings, we have a lot of a lot of supporters and donors mm-hmm. out there who support our mission and support our cause, especially if they've been touched by our services in the past. Yeah. No. Part of your funding comes from fundraisers. I mean, that's just yep. the nature of the beast of nonprofit and of church work. You mm-hmm. mentioned the annual Catholic appeals, fundraising, just outright asking <laughs> for money. Um, but I know Catholic Social Services of Montana does more than just outright appeals of asking for money. Talk about uh, your fundraising effort. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. I appreciate that. Yeah. So we do a golf tournament in July. This year it's July 14th down here in Helena at the at the big city course here in town. Uh, we have all sorts of prizes lined up, but this is the big way, you know, through gathering sponsors and gathering teams, this is the big way that we support um, our services through a fundraiser every year. Um, and it's it makes a big difference in what we do, especially, you know, the teams coming from both dioceses. I know I'm hoping to get some teams down from Great Falls for sure, and we'd love anybody else from, from Great Falls Billings. I know it can tend to be a long drive all the way up here to Helena, but we'd love to have any teams that want to come up here for the weekend. Sure. Um, but that's our, that's our big fundraiser for 2024. So a lot of exciting prizes. Um, and like I said, it's on July 14th. So it's on a Friday, um, right in the middle of July. Um, but nice usually it's, warm out it's, on the ni- it's nice and warm. <laughs> Last year we had a beautiful day and it's fun, of course, you know, in the morning in July, you're still getting that kind of dew droppy morning. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you have that nice morning and then you got everyone working the course. We have a nice lunch at the end. It's a really, it's a really fantastic thing. And I should mention, I should mention, hopefully I'm sure he'll watch this video, but Bishop Fleming said he'd be coming down to support it. So that's what I hear. Yeah, I'm really excited to have him down there. <laughs> He worked it when he was uh, when he was a priest down here in the Diocese of Helena. And now that he's bishop up there in Great Falls Billings, he wants to continue to support it, which is a really, really fun thing. I'm looking forward to having him down. But in addition, I would also encourage um, everyone to keep an eye out because we're hoping to have some additional fundraisers in the future. Once we get mental health services up and rolling, hope mm-hmm. to have a fundraiser that would ideally be back in Great Falls, Bill, in the Diocese of Great Falls, Billings, or span the whole state. Sure. Yeah. If people want to get in touch with you, learn more about Catholic Social mm-hmm. Services or promote Catholic Social Services, how can they do that? Yeah, that's great. That's a great question. So we have a website. Um, try to keep it as up to date and as, as nice as possible with what we got going on. And that's easy. So that's just cssmt.org. Of which, of course, is Catholic Social Services of Montana.org. So Excellent. pretty easy. Um, we also have a Facebook page you can look us up at. Um, just you can just type in the search bar Catholic Social Services of Montana, and that's well, we should pop right up with our with our logo, which is a couple of folks that have kind of been turned into a tree. It's really a 
It's hard to explain, <laughs> right. but, <laughs> but you'll see. You'll see we'll it pop it right up. here on this yeah. video. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so we have a Facebook page, um, and in addition, you can always you can always call us and reach out too. Um, we have a couple numbers, and I'll share them both. Our main office line is 406-442-4130. Now, if you, for, you know, potentially expectant mothers, mm -hmm. or if you know someone who could be using our services or could use some support from our social workers, you know, even if that's just talking to a social worker to, you know, work through, do I want to keep my child? Do I want to adopt my child? You know, I'm having mental health issues. I feel isolated. They can always reach out to our social workers um, because they are, our social workers are allowed to provide counseling to these, to these women who are experiencing this. And a good number to call there is going to be 1-800-BABY-DO. So B-A-B-Y-D-U-E. Excellent. So, yep, that's, that's a line that connects directly to one of our social workers here in Montana. Yep. Scott, thank you for taking time today to visit a little bit about Catholic Social mm -hmm. Services in Montana, and thank you for your ministry as the Executive Director. Absolutely. Thank you for the time, Thomas, and thank you for all the prayers and support that, um, that, the, you know, that we receive. Every, everything makes a difference, and we appreciate it, and we're very, very happy to serve Montanans. Mm -hmm.